the three study uh, that uh, I want to briefly uh, talk about, uh, uh, those were uh, important, is uh, ASCO. Uh, one was uh, in the gastric cancer that uh, FGF are uh, uh, to be uh, 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 antagonist, uh, the antibody uh, uh, bimaritizumab, uh, uh, compare uh, with, uh, in combination with fall fox versus uh, fall fox uh, alone. Uh, and the study uh, endpoint was uh, uh, progression-free survival. So the only uh, patient who have uh, this uh, FGF are uh, 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 2B overexpression. Uh, they were eligible for this study. And this study uh, showed that uh, those patients had a significant improvement in progression-free survival of uh, uh, nine versus uh, seven months. Uh, and when uh, they look at the uh, uh, degree of uh, 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 overexpression of uh, FGF uh, uh, R2B, uh, uh, there was a strong uh, dose dependent response rate uh, and the uh, hazard ratio further declined uh, below 50 uh, for those patients who are more than five or more than 10%. Uh, uh, expression. And uh, if I recall, uh, those patients uh, who were about uh, two-thirds of the total uh, study cohort, uh, 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 I believe uh, more than 900 patients were screened for that, and about 155 patients were randomized to chemotherapy uh, plus uh, Bima, which is a versus uh, fall fox uh, alone. So those patients who had uh, more than 10% overexpression of F, uh, G, uh, FRTB, uh, they have uh, PFS of almost uh, 14 months uh, versus seven. So that's uh, very promising, I think. I think the only drawback in this study, there was a high uh, incidence of uh, corneal toxicity. Uh, almost uh, more than 20% patient had grade three uh, corneal toxicity, keratitis, dry eye, and they had to discontinue the medication and there were high incidence of stomatitis. So that's uh, a major drawback, but those people who can tolerate, I think that's a very good option. The second study uh, I want to highlight was uh, of those three uh, in the colorectal cancer. Uh, it was a prospective cohort study that uh, looked at the uh, prognostic and potential uh, predictive, uh, uh, I would say more prognostic uh, value and the uh, uh, circulating uh, DNA in the colorectal cancer patient. And uh, uh, this was a, a collaborative study that uh, more than 200 patients were longitudinally followed with CT DNA post-surgery and every three months. And they found that uh, those patients uh, who had uh, uh, CT DNA positive uh, after procedure, they have uh, almost 80% uh, patient uh, uh, develop recurrences versus uh, 13%, so almost 11-fold uh, increased uh, risk. Uh, and those patients who, after completion of chemotherapy, uh, if they were CTDNA positive, again, more than 80% patient develop recurrence uh, versus about 12% uh, uh, who uh, uh, were uh, negative. But the striking uh, uh, thing uh, that we noted that uh, uh, those patients who had the longitudinal follow-up, and if they were uh, negative consistently all the time versus those who were positive any time, there was a huge 55-fold uh, difference in the risk of uh, recurrence. So almost 90% uh, patients who had CT DNA positive any, any time longitudinally developed recurrent disease versus only 3% who uh, were negative all the time. So I think that's the uh, uh, basis for a future study looking at the escalating that treatment uh, that was uh, discussed also uh, in the uh, ASCO GI that uh, patient with early stage, stage one and two, if they are positive with CT DNA, uh, CT -DNA uh, then we should consider treating. And those patients with the stage three, if they are negative, uh, then the chemotherapy may be avoided those patients. And it seemed to be a better tool than the uh, CA level to follow. Uh, and the lead time was almost uh, eight months uh, before uh, we see the radiographic evidence of recurrence disease. So those patients who had positive CT DNA, uh, uh, they need a more extensive follow-up to identify the early resectable disease and do the metastasectomy. 
uh, rather than the, the scan that we do uh, every uh, year or uh, perhaps uh, in some places it's been done uh, at 12 months and at three years. So that would be helpful. And then lastly, I think uh, it's related to uh, the uh, SMART study also that uh, we talked about, but that was more in the borderline pancreatic cancer. It was the Alliance uh, trial, randomized uh, phase two study that was uh, comparing uh, induction treatment with fall for inox versus fall for inox and uh, hyperfractionated uh, radiation based on the Alliance uh, initial uh, data that showed that uh, a uh, patient with borderline pancreatic cancer, if they're treated with four cycles of induction, fall, filinox, uh, followed by uh, radiation, followed by surgery. The 18-month uh, median uh, overall survival was uh, more than 50 uh, percent. So I think that was the uh, purpose of this study, to identify the uh, prefer uh, regimen. And this is really show that uh, the patient who just received uh, chemotherapy fall for an ox for eight cycle, their survival was uh, eight, at 18 months, uh, almost uh, uh, 66% versus those patients who receive uh, radiation had quite inferior survival of uh, 47%. And even though uh, adding radiation was associated with uh, increased uh, pathological complete response rate of uh, 10 to 11%, but unfortunately, a uh, majority of the uh, patient had uh, a short even free uh, survival of 10 months versus uh, 15 months. Uh, less number of patients were able to uh, go for surgery and less number of patients had uh, RO resection. And when we look at the median overall survival of those patients, that was almost uh, uh, 30 months versus uh, uh, 17 months uh, with chemo radiation. So that study suggesting that radiation does not have much role uh, in this setting. But as I said, that uh, uh, other ablation tackling, such as uh, IRE, which is less toxic and has a novel way of uh, uh, destroying the tumor cells, so that might have more uh, future role uh, uh, in uh, management of uh, uh, pancreatic cancer, especially a uh, patient with uh, locally advanced pancreatic cancer uh, th than radiation. So I think that's uh, the basis uh, for a patient with the borderline pancreatic cancer, who uh, if we do surgery upfront, they have a high risk of uh, 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 positive margin. Uh, so instead of incorporating radiation, it seems that chemotherapy alone is the standard option followed by surgery and followed by adjuvant chemotherapy.